Welcome. Another week, another debate. To debate your favorite, the one and only debating battle podcast on this wonderful podcasting planet. And speaking of which, live here from Frankfurt, Germany, your host Dirk speaking with live from Jakarta, Sebastian. How are you doing today? Bike, bike. <laughs> Terima kasih. What was that? I'm, I'm doing well, thank you. I'm speaking by Hazel. Say it I, once I more. Just, it, I think it's Baik. Baik. You say very good. I'm good. I think you say Apakabar. Apakabar is how are you and Baik is I'm good. And Terima Kasi is thank you. But, so the reason why there was a delay is because I was, I was just switching my brain on because I'm, it's a bit late and I'm jet lagged. And, uh, and I thought, what am I going to answer in a slightly different way? I, I think for every single debate opener, we have a different introduction. Every single time we said something different. Um, so I like to be creative. I very much hope so. Although there is a certain pattern. I hope we are not too confusing today. Um, so good generic time of the day, Sebastian. We are simultaneously in the middle of the day and in the middle of the night right now. So we cover our listeners around the world. I guess we can go straight to the motion, which is, which is. Blockchain is nothing but digital snake oil. And so we, before we go further, maybe you want to define what the blockchain is. Why is it always I, me who is the one who you ask to define things? How about you? I, I think, <laughs> I, I think we, we're going to, I don't know, your, your doctor definition. <laughs> You've just been awarded the title. You're allowed to define what a blockchain is. So... You have two sentences. <laughs> well, I'm German. I'm German. I can I can concatenate sentences as long as I like. <laughs> um, okay, fine. You're two sentences, three thousand words. Yeah. It's okay. So, um, most listeners probably heard of it as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one technology that sits on what is called blockchain. And what is the idea? Um, the idea is to have a mechanism that distributes trust in a way that uh, you can have an exchange, be it money, be it contracts, be it whatever, in, uh, without a third person that uh, you get the trust from. What does it mean? If you do a business transaction, for instance, like you swipe your credit card to pay something, that's a transaction between you and the person you pay and a third party, which is the bank. If you do a transaction through Bitcoin, it's a transaction just between you and the person receiving the money. And the, the magic that happens in between is math and computing. And that is basically what it comes down to. Blockchain is a whole range of technologies that are in combination trying to solve for that use case. That's There are several blockchain based technologies out there in the in the computation world bitcoin being the most known but there is also something called ethereum and there are other cryptocurrencies as they are called and we talk about the whole space in the example you provided each transaction would in a simplistic way form a block right like saying Doug gives me ten dollars this is a block of information you encrypt it and it's added to all the previous transactions that happen using that currency between you and your family and others so that block is added to other blocks hence the the name the chain of blocks blockchain i just explain where the where the name is coming uh, so this is this go ahead and also the encryption is designed in a way that makes it close to impossible to unchain those blocks so once something is added to the chain it stays there forever which makes it incredibly transparent you can uh, reassess transactions for all eternity or until no computers store any blockchain information anymore and the blockchain also has another property is distributed so every participant can download the entire chain which also means If you want to be a bad actor and you want to change an element of that blockchain somewhere in the middle you 
have no real way of doing that because you cannot access all the copies of that blockchain everywhere on the planet. And that is a pretty efficient protection against manipulations of those chains. So in summary, it's a higher trust decentralized mechanism for storing any kind of transactions, which don't have to be money based, money based, right? It doesn't have to be financial transactions. It can be any kind of transaction in the, in the broader sense of the term. Would you mind defining what is a snake oil? Because that could be an expression that some non-English native speakers may be unfamiliar with. Miss Doctor definition. For our 100th episode, I'm going to cut out all the Dirk, may you define segments? And then I, I make a long, long, long dictionary for you out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, what is a snake oil, a digital snake oil? Snake oil is a metaphor for, let's say, something that's not quite as useful as people claim it is. So snake oil is a term that comes from medieval times, I believe, where uh, you had traveling salesmen selling you all sorts of things. And sometimes there have been magic potions among their, their range of goods, potions that make you fall in love or what have you. And in reality, it, in the best case, it was just something that had no effect at all. In the worst case, it was actually poisonous, like snake oil and other things. So this is, I believe, where the term comes from. And it's a metaphor for things that are just not doing what people claim they do. So the motion is... <laughs> After having having debated on the definition. You asked the German to make an easy definition. Thank you. <laughs> the flip of the coin, because this is again randomly assigned, has decided da -da -da -da, that I, Sebastian, will be in favor of the, the motion, which is blockchain is nothing but digital snake oil and uh, will be logically against. Okay. Let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. I'm going to explain how blockchain is digital snake oil. And even more than that, it's so dangerous, so dangerous that it could actually force us out of our own planet faster than expected. I don't know about you, but for the time being, I feel pretty good about living on planet Earth. So rather than trying my luck in, in outer space. So I would wait a few more decades before trying my luck in outer space, if you don't mind. But the point is, blockchain is way overblown, way out of proportion. Everyone talked about Bitcoin while it was very hot last Christmas. What has happened since? Completely crashed. Nobody really get, cares. Um, I never, nobody gives up. You can beat that. Uh, why? Because only 1,000 people, about 1,000 people were truly trading Bitcoins. 1,000 people. That's a far cry from billions of people living on this planet, potentially using a currency, a currency used by 1,000 people. Yeah, right. Bitcoin is currency for criminals. But I'm not going to talk about Bitcoin only. Aha, Dirk, you thought I was going to only talk about Bitcoin. But no, blockchain is a very elegant solution to no problem or to such a niche problems, such niche applications, that these applications honestly can have solutions that don't really require blockchain. Yes, blockchain is a real thing, but it's so limited, it becomes completely useless. It's sort of a bit like, by the way, an artificial intelligence, which does not need to be used in every single instance. But unlike artificial intelligence, which is going to change radically a lot of the things that we do do in many different domains, Blockchain is not going to change radically anything at all. Intrinsically, it has a lot of problems. If you take the example of, of, of Bitcoin, it was not useful either because of crazy fluctuations. So I'll get back in my three minutes afterwards as to why it's also bad for the environment and how it's using so much power that we're probably going to destroy our planet. Thank you, blockchain. But no, it's nothing but it's all snake oil, very dangerous kind of snake oil. <laughs> Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. There are 22 million Bitcoin wallets globally. There is an estimated 5% of Americans' households that hold Bitcoin. I'm not sure where your st uh, statistics about the thousand people that trade Bitcoin comes from, but it's 
slightly distorted. In fact, there are two, uh, two and a half to five millions, uh, it's hard to say really, um, active users on Bitcoin. So it's at least two and a half. That's the pessimistic estimation. And the optimistic one is more than five million. The leading exchange of Bitcoin, so the trading exchange um, or the place where you can trade Bitcoins, Coinbase has over 30 million users. I also doubt that all of these are criminals, but I tell you who may benefit from a cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, who's not doing it out of criminal intent. People without a bank account. Who might not have a bank account, you ask? Refugees, for instance. People in emerging markets. People that have, for better or worse, not the full scope and might of a Western infrastructure at their hand can exchange money through Bitcoin systems. You also ask, are there any problems Bitcoin can solve that we cannot solve today? This is one, but others are your medical records without having to trust a company that basically sells them to everyone who offers some ad money on top of it. Your maybe contact data, if you want to have an encrypted wallet where you store your contacts that are dear to you. Contracts, blockchain technology allows you to form contracts between individuals instead of always having to trust somebody where To be, to be honest, you know nothing about. So instead of having two people you don't know anything about, you can just limit it to the one person you have the transaction with and put it in a secure lever. So Bitcoin is way more than digital snake oil. It's literally changing the world, how we conduct business. And that's exactly why uh, banks, insurance companies, health insurance and so on, and governments try to paint it as something only criminals would use. <laughs> Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. I should have clarified it's a thousand big traders, a thousand traders of Bitcoin own 40% of the market, a thousand traders. So with a shrug of their shoulders, they can influence the way a market goes up or down. This is not a stable market. And I'm not discounting the fact that blockchain is an elegant solution, but You're talking about emerging markets, a region I know quite well. Guess what? Do you really need blockchain or do you, can you use cash? Okay, fine. Cash is old fashioned. What about mobile wallets? Very simple solution, centralized system, because here's the point. The point of a central jurisdiction is that when things go wrong, you're protected. You have whatever, state protection, regional protection, like in the case of the EU, for instance. And I know that's the whole point of a decentralized system because you would not have to rely on the central jurisdiction. But do we have any example of a decentralized system that works internationally? None. None because we need oversight. We need regulation. Why? Because there will always be people who try to find a workaround, an illegal workaround to rip off other people. That's the way our human brains are designed. We are selfish. And here's the thing. I'm optimistic, despite me painting the human being as being a selfish individual, which we are. Here's the optimistic bit. As corruption gradually disappears around the world, corruption does disappear. We have more and more democratic societies over the long run of humanity. The need for decentralized, decentralization gradually disappears. As there's less corruption and more trust, and people know how to interact with each other, decentralization becomes less and less, less important. And I'm laughing because I see, I see Doug reacting. I said it's bad for the environment. I mean it. Blockchain technology, and I will not get into the details of this, but consumes more power than some entire countries already today. And it's useless, right? It's consuming so much power that it means we'll be destroying our planet even faster than I expected. So we'll have to leave our planet sooner. And you know what? I like Earth, as I said in my introduction. So I mean it. Blockchain is dangerous. It solves no practical problems problem that we can't solve in a much lighter, more convenient way. So yes, it's a real thing, but it's limited. So it's overblown. It's out of proportion. What else did you mention? I think that's it. I don't have anything else to add. It's just digital snake oil. I mean, this is the motion. It's nothing more than that. Oh, fine. Okay. I'll give, I'll give you one thing. It's an elegant solution for no problem. Next up, Dirk. So I had to listen hard to kind of 
guess what you mean by it drives us off the planet. And I'm only guessing because you never provided us with uh, the real reason behind that statement. It's the energy consumption. So I suppose, yeah, you're nodding. I suppose the the office buildings that our banks are creating the cars that the bank uh, um, employees drive every day to those buildings the energy consumption the air conditioning in those buildings the server rooms that are spread around the globe they don't count for anything right so it's it's only the energy monster blockchain compared to the presumably zero energy consumption structure we created with credit cards and bank accounts right i do think the listeners kind of hear in my voice how ridiculous i find this statement so this is this is not really true and it's not a fair comparison also i like to say one more thing some of the applications of blockchain are a bit clunky these days so you you say it's an elegant solution i wouldn't say it's that elegant after all um it's it's still clunky um But that is because it's a young technology. There will be a lot of development further down the road. It already solves a number of important problems. And you pointed to that as well. A centralized structure is a structure that can break down because of stupid political decisions. We've seen that in the past. A decentralized structure may prove more resilient against events like this. Um, the arguments that go for a decentralized cryptocurrency, for instance, are very similar to an argument that goes for real cash. We had a debate on the value of cash over the value of a purely digitized currency. And Bitcoin is the equivalent to cash in the computerized world, if you will. So, yes, maybe some sometimes that enables criminals, but it also enables dissidents, regular people, and it protects them for governments taking control over their money because, uh, well, nobody can. You, you own your Bitcoin wallet um, yourself, and the only transactions you do is the stuff that you authorize yourself. You say it's a solution to a non-existing problem. Again, I beg to differ. We have a number of problems attached to our current system because newsflash, it only works for about a fifth of the world population. The systems we created these days only, and you know that better than me actually, only work in what we call the Western world, where you have an always on energy supply, where you have a really distributed infrastructure with banks, no war zone, all these things. So we need solutions for that, for instance. And in a increasingly globalized world, we also need a way to have transactions between members of several nation states without having to, well, bridge the gap between the, the local legislation. So yes, blockchain technology solves a number of important problems and it's about to change the world and how we conduct business. I said that before. It's no digital snake oil. It's maybe one of the big revolutions that come down our way through technology. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. It's unlikely that even with a blockchain, that banks will disappear. So we can safely assume that the servers required to run credit card operations are going to continue in existence. I, I did emphasize that blockchain just adds an extra burden, and it's consuming indeed quite a bit of power, but it has become noticeable for solving not much. Um, and that's, that's the thing. We are making a huge fuss out of this. Uh, it may have some very, very niche applications. And even then, I'm not entirely convinced that we can't do with other more simple solutions. Um, so let's see. I uh, do think that we have the proven counterexample that Bitcoin, which was a big deal over the past year, proved to be a, a big joke, basically, with a number of uh, currency exchanges going uh, because of bad practices and because of lack of regulation and oversight of how this is being run. So I think we have enough examples that it's uh, it's a bit of a scam. Right? So the technology is there, but it's not very really useful and a bit dangerous to the planet and to the average consumer. So sorry, but no. Dirk. Newsflash to you. Blockchain technology is not existing in a limbo. So even those players you mentioned, banks, but also airlines, 
insurance companies, what have you, are using blockchain, sometimes internally. They have blockchain-based systems for its advantages. They replace some of the central systems for its resilience. It solves very real problems. Some of the things that are legitimate criticisms, like the energy consumption, or sometimes you didn't even mention that the speed of a tra single transaction, are dis bound to disappear over time. I disagree with you on it has proven to be a uh, not worth the effort in the past. Bitcoin is still around. I know plenty of people who just started investing into that. It seemed to be something that's mentioned on the news lately. So uh, the, the hype is not over, whether or not you agree or disagree with it. And certainly blockchain is here to stay in many, many ways and forms, sometimes without us even noticing. For instance, you rent a car and the transaction you, you do at the counter is actually managed through a blockchain-driven system. Just one example. And there are plenty examples like these. We have whole countries like Estonia or Malta who decided to put things like voting systems on a blockchain. I do think that's pro that provides plenty of proof that is, is a valid technology. Thank you very much. <laughs>
it will be just tiny pieces, I think, of the technology used in different, like in, in wider parts. In itself, I think we're making too much too much of a fuss. I don't know. In that we honest, actually agree, know. right? So it's like a little bit overhyped. That's what I said in the beginning in the intro as well, if you remember. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I do Absolutely. believe it's it's a bit overhyped. So it's not it's probably not solving for all the problems people like to claim it will solve, at least not anytime soon. But I do think it's a substantial change of uh, philosophy in certain aspects of tech. So you you have an an additional player. Um, if you're a systems architect, there is an additional way of thinking about the problem, and sometimes that may even be the better solution to some of the challenges we have. Thinking of discussion I had a few months ago with the founder of WebDollar.io, which is a web browser-based cryptocurrency. And uh, the interesting thing is he has realized that there's a white paper available also, quite interesting, which shows that you can achieve a fairly high level of security by not having to mine the entire blockchain, but just by mining the first few blocks and the last few blocks. Which leads me to think that variations of the, of the traditional concepts of, of blockchain may, may be more interesting than the initial concept of it. That we, you, you, we may not need the hugely power-hungry uh, mining of the entire blockchain to be able to come up with nice solutions. Maybe I call it elegant because I think it's elegant in the sense that it's new and it's a novel way of not relying on the central trust system. Um, so I think there may be variations of it. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, that, that may not require the absolute 100% mathematical implementation of it like mining the entire blockchain for instance i'm not an expert i've just read that white paper and i found it interesting to find creative ways of going beyond the the, the blockchain as we know it for bitcoin for instance yeah so i, uh, I i've so, seen a number of these things so from most of the criticisms on bitcoin for instance you find efforts like this so for instance um if you say hey it's so en high on em energy consumption which is fair that's it consumes a lot of energy but that that is an area where you have a lot of leverage by looking hard at the protocol and maybe some smart computer science brain comes up with a different model of ensuring the trust among the chain. Um, and yes, the mining is a part, um, the, the, redistribu uh, the, the distributed nature of it, um, the amount of storage space that we require as a species to keep this thing running is also quite extraordinary. I, w I assume that there also are smarter ways to do this at some point. Mm -hmm.